Hey y'all. I cannot believe that I'm about to make a video on how to make a buttermilk biscuit. But here we are. Um, a couple days ago I made a pan of biscuits and I posted a picture of them on Facebook and people are so sweet to me. They said such nice things. I had requests for recipes. I had people wanting lessons. And then I had some smart friends suggest that I do a video. So shout out to Amanda Blue and shout out to Melanie Pruitt for suggesting that I just make a video so people can see the process. It's not hard to do. If it was hard to do, I probably wouldn't be able to do it. Three ingredients. I mean, it doesn't really get easier than that. Um, number one, I am not a professional baker or a cook or any of those things. No training. I just like to eat, so I do the best I can. And number two, I am a complete idiot when it comes to technology. So I'm using my telephone to film this. I'm using a lamp out of my office as my light. So, um, oh, and this is my kitchen that I cook in every day. So I'm going to do the best I can and feel my way with it. And hopefully the biscuits are going to turn out fabulous. So just like that, I have it set up ready to make a biscuit. Isn't that amazing? Magic. Okay, kid. So, like I said before, three ingredients. That's all it takes to make the perfect buttermilk biscuit. Now listen, I like to use buttermilk because I don't think that regular milk makes a very tasty biscuit. Buttermilk makes some fluffy, makes them rise up better. There's just a whole lot of things that work in favor of buttermilk. So, if you have something against buttermilk, you think it's gross, stop. That's silly. Buttermilk is a fabulous ingredient, so use it and use it well. So, we're going to have four cups of self-rising flour. Some people like to use plain and then add their leavening, baking soda, and the baking powder. But I don't because self-rising works. So, I'm going to go in here for... Four cups of self-rising flour. And two, three, and then one more. All right. So, there is four cups of flour. And we're going to have some extra at the end so we can roll our stuff out. But we'll just put that back right now. I need my butter. Let me get the butter. So, butter. That's what I use. My mama uses vegetable shortening. Some people use lard. I just think butter works. I don't know. It's easy to come by. And it doesn't leave that funky artificial taste in your mouth like it's slick. Like when you eat a biscuit that's made with Crisco or something. I mean, nothing against Mama's biscuits because she makes the most fabulous biscuits. But her biscuit's different than mine. So this is my biscuit. If you want to watch how Brenda Seabelt makes a biscuit, go to her house. <laughs> All right, so I have added my butter. This was two full sticks of butter. And I froze it initially so that I could grate it on a box grater. So that it would look real fine like this. Um, it's important to keep it cold and to keep it in little chunks. So now I'm just going to mix it up. Get all the butter coated. Perfect. Some people eyeball it according to what the uh, flour looks like. Um, they call it the gravel stage. That's when the butter has come together with the flour. Makes it looks like a little pea gravel. Eh, I guess it looks a little bit like pea gravel. Stage is on. All right. I'm taking my rings off because, well, I need to because they're a pain in the rear end to clean afterwards. So I'm going to stick my rings right there. All right. Ingredient number three. Full fat cultured buttermilk. Don't use fat free. It ain't fit to drink. Not that I drink it, but it ain't fit to cook with either. It just, you need the fat. If you're making southern biscuits, mm. you need the fat. That's 
seriously. This is three cups. So in is boom. I'm gonna trade out spatulas because that's kind of a flimsy one. One for the heavy duty. Now basically all I'm gonna do is bring this together and it's gonna make like a blob in my bowl. And that's what we want. So I'm stirring, kind of folding it in. Everything's coming together just the way I want it to. See that? You didn't think it was going to soak up all that milk, did you? But it did. All right. So we're ready to form. So I'm just going to move my bowl to the side, get my trusty sifter. You don't have to, but I think I've got it, so I'm going to use it. I'm going to dust my board just like that. Because you don't want to have too much flour on your board because then you'll be tempted to incorporate more than you need. And if you incorporate a lot more flour than you need, well, then your biscuit's going to be tough and chewy. And who wants that? Because that would stink. So, got my board floured. Put my glasses up. And I'm going to take this. I'm going to dump it out right here. Get it all out. Scrape it. Don't leave nothing because that's wasting. We don't waste. But we try not to waste. All right. Boom. Look at that. So what we have is a big blob. And it's sticky, but it's perfect. It's just what we want to see. So I'm going to take a little flour. Make a little pile. So I can get my fingers in it. Just like that. And then I'm just going to sprinkle a little on top. And I'm going to start gently forming this dough into maybe you call it a ball or it's more like a block. That's what we're doing. We're looking for a block. And I'm sprinkling as I go because it does need a little bit more work into it. But it feels nice and soft. Um, it's kind of hard to tell you exactly what it feels like if you're not standing right here with me so I can like, feel it. But we're getting to the stage where it's starting to hold together. It's not going to fall apart on you. And that's what we're looking for. Because when we get to this stage, when it's starting to hold together nice, we're going to be able to fold it. Because when you fold the dough over on itself, then we're going to get layers. And everybody likes layers. In a biscuit anyway. Now my mama's biscuits, she doesn't have layers in hers. She makes what I call a cloud biscuit. And... They're amazing, but I can't replicate them. I've tried. I've watched her make them my whole life, and I cannot make that biscuit. She doesn't roll out. Of it. She just mixes it in a bowl, and when she's ready to make her biscuit, she pinches it off, and then she rolls it. It's aggravating is what it is because I cannot do it. Now, my sister Lisa thinks she can do it, and I guess she can, but I'm just not that good, I guess. So this is my method. Anyway, we're going to fold it a couple more times because it's still kind of ooey gooey. Don't be scared. All going to work out, I promise. Can't really mess it up. And you're just going to cover it with gravy anyway, right? All right, so now we're to the stage where we're seriously we can start folding. So I'm just going to fold it over on itself. Pat it down a little bit, take a little sprinkle, pat a little more, and I'm gonna roll it back to me and I'm gonna pat it out. Move it away from the edge, it won't fall on the floor. And spread out a little flour so that there's no sticking. I'm actually gonna roll it over. Look at that. Big hot mess. Take this, move it out of the way. All right, now we just gonna fold it one more time, and we'll fold it in the third. So there's one, and then one makes three. One, one, one makes three. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna take my trusty rolling pin. I'm gonna roll this sucker out. We're looking to about 
don't know, half an inch, two thirds of an inch. I don't know. You don't want a full inch though, because that would be a huge mouthful. But I mean, I guess it depends on what the occasion. If you want to make just a one giant biscuit, that's your business too. Who am I to tell you what to do? But this is what I do. So I've got it rolled out. And it feels wonderful. Now, ahead of time, I prepped some little pans. And I've got my cutters set out here. Now, I have an assortment of, of cutters. You can use whatever you want. If you like to use a jelly jar, or if you like to make them square, use a knife. Whatever works. But I like these little round ones. I like this big one. That's what I'm going to use today. But if you're making tea cakes or something, I have little bitty tiny ones. That works too. Anyway, so I'm going to flour the outside edge here because we don't want it to stick. And we're going to go in and we're going to press down. And we're going to flour it up again, press down. And we're just going to cut these suckers out so we can pan them up. Telling you, there's nothing like a biscuit, though. They make people happy. They make me happy. When you mention a biscuit and gravy, it just brings a smile to your face. If it don't bring a smile to your face, or something wrong. Or maybe you just haven't had a good biscuit and gravy. Whatever. Okay, so here we are. I got my little pans. And now we're going to load them up. I have made a hot mess out of this, but you know what? It's all good. This is my first video. <laughs> okay, so I'm take my little pan. Sit right here. I'm going to gently pick these up. And I'm going to pan them up. I need to do a video next on some sausage gravy because I mean, why in the world would you make a biscuit if you're not going to make some gravy? I bet Brad would appreciate that too. They're sticking a little bit, so I'm going to help out a little bit. Boom. And we got this one here. I'm going to stick him in there. And then, my mama, for some reason, she always pats them down. She put three fingerprints. Boom, boom, boom. So, these might not be mama's biscuits. But they got mama's technique. Now, look, I'm going to take a little butter and put on the top. Because, seriously, why wouldn't I? So we're going to paint these real nice and pretty. Now this is full fat butter. This ain't margarine. Don't you use margarine. If you use margarine, you cannot come back to my kitchen. Now I'm sorry, Mr. Margarine Company. That hurts your feelings, but margarine is not delightful. Don't do it. Okay, so here's one pan. Of biscuits and they are perfectly delightful and they're ready for the oven. I have preheated my oven to 415 degrees. Now my mama likes to bake hers at 400. My sister likes to bake hers at 425. I took the middle of the road so we're going for 415. It's really however whatever works. So going in. Boom. And I'm going to set this for about 15 minutes. Oh, I made a mess. Let's go. And we will come back and check these. 15 minutes. Well, I've checked them several times and I think they're done. Shut up. Look at that.
Now, since I used these smaller pans, I had to squish them up against one another. And that tends to make them um, soft around the edges. And there's nothing wrong with that because that's the best kind of biscuit to have if you're gonna have a gravy biscuit. But if you wanted a biscuit that you could crack open and stuff, or one that has layers in it, then you would want to do what I did on the second batch of dough that I had left over. I just placed them on the sheet pan, but I didn't let them touch. And so this is how they turn out. And I also used a smaller cutter. But you see they've got some pretty little layers going on and we can pull them apart. And it's just fabulous. I'm gonna pull one of these big ones apart though because I'm curious what it's like in the middle. Because I did try to get a few layers in there. Come out, you. Whoo, he's hot. Oh! Stop. It looks real good. It is delightful. Now, there's not a lot of definite layers, but if that was your jam, then this would be your method. Don't put them together so they can't squish up. Look at this. It's just like a pillow. Huh? And it's burning me. And it's, I don't even care. I do not even care. So, there's only one thing left to do. You gotta put some jelly on. Well, this is muscadine jelly. I collected muscadines in the fall out of my yard. Well, in the woods around my yard. And I made this jelly. And I think it's fabulous. So here it goes. It's going to be even more fabulous because look at this. Stop. Okay, here it goes. One, two, three. Shut up. Seriously. That is heaven. It seriously is. If this doesn't make you smile, if this doesn't do your heart good, you need to have a talk with Jesus because there is something wrong with you because this is just delightful. That top with that butter got so nice and toasty brown, it's so crunchy, but then you get to the middle and it's just like a pillow. It's so soft. It's too bad we don't have a big thing of sausage gravy because if I were to make that and bring Brad Musgrove up here, <gasps> stop the press. He'd be all over it. Anyway, this is how to make a buttermilk biscuit. I ended up cooking them for about 25 minutes at 415. And it was perfect. I did turn the broiler on there at the end because they weren't quite as brown as I wanted. Don't, don't let them go too long or you'll burn them. And then it's a wasted project. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Leave me a comment. Tell me if it's good, tell me if it's bad, whatever. But do try to make them because they're easy. And I mean, everybody needs to learn to make a biscuit. Bye y'all.